We're resuming from Part 1A, where we discussed cybersecurity attacks. We now look at the defense. Defensive measures stem from security policies and controls put in place. Among other things, policies have to strike a balance between security and productivity. Security controls are measures taken that ultimately support policies. Examples of simple controls are things like requirements to change your password every 60 days, or your computer locking up after five minutes of inactivity. Controls can be broad and sophisticated, and they are a major topic in part two. As much of the enforcement must be done in real time, we enter the realm of powerful machines. Filtering and inspection is the first active level of policy enforcement. While it is almost always applied at the network boundary, it can be applied at multiple locations within a network to create what are called zones of trust. The next reference slide on IP and TCP frame headers is background material for the discussion of firewall states. As noted, filtering and inspection is the first active level of policy enforcement and it's performed by a firewall. The firewalling function can be performed by existing equipment, like putting firewall software on your PC, but in larger environments, it's usually performed by a specialized firewall device. Policy rules are effectively programmed into the firewall, which manages traffic based on these rules. Nominally, firewalls are classified as stateless or stateful. Stateless firewalls make decisions about allowing or blocking a connection based on initial call parameters like IP addresses and or TCP, TCP ports, while the more complex stateful firewall also monitors the connection in progress and will act on deviations from expectation. For example, unexpected changes in sequence or acknowledgement numbers in the TCP frame header. Here is one point to block outbound traffic, traffic containing personally identifying information, PII, such as credit card or bank account numbers. More broadly, the same applies to blind the exfiltration of corporate data and intellectual property. In general, this topic is called either data loss or data leakage prevention, DLP in either case. The upcoming reference slide addresses proxies which are shown in the reference diagram. Powerful Intrusion Detection and Prevention Systems, or IDPS, are the backbone of cyber defense. We'll cover them in this section, as well as the important concepts of signatures and sandboxes. IDPS are specialized network appliances that, have, that can be considered as antiviral systems. They fall into two types, network-based and host-based, that are very different in scale. Your PC, running AV software, is a host system, a HIDS. Let's look at the characteristics of network-based systems, NIDS. First, they perform deep or complete inspection of all traffic, in or out, to discover malware and exfiltration attempts. This deep packet inspection, DPI, can go through all layers of the packet. Second, NIDs develop and maintain historical perspectives so they can detect anomalies or deviations from a norm which might suggest improper activity. And NIDs are tightly integrated with the Security Operations Center, the SOC, for quick action on policy and rule changes in the IDPS. There is discussion about what amounts to adding IDPS capabilities to a more powerful firewall, often called a next-generation firewall. Manufacturers will fight that battle, and we'll focus on what has to be done, not where it's done. As noted, signatures and sandboxes are important terms in cybersecurity. With signatures, the IDPS scans packets looking for the actual malicious code or other indicators. The IDPS is programmed with rules for detecting this signature of the malware. Note that the word signature is used to mean either the malware itself or the rule sets placed into the IDPS to find it. 
Fortunately, the meaning usually is clearer in context. With sandboxing, the code is executed to see what it actually does, so it's a more processing-intensive approach. The code is executed on virtual machines created in isolation for this purpose. This isolated play area is the sandbox. Signatures have no meaning without foreknowledge of the malware, which suggests an expanding signature database, which is frequently updated by the IDPS manufacturer. Rules for signature-based IDPS are expressed in Boolean terms, and their formatting often conforms to SNORP and open source NIDs. Neither approach is perfect, so facing signature or sandbox, bad actors plan and act accordingly, including developing detection evasion techniques for sandboxes. They must have some interesting staff meetings. Defenders also employ decoy servers and other resources known as honeypots to lure malware. Malware thus captured can teach defenders about shortcomings in their defenses and potentially serve as the basis to turn the tables on the bad actors. We'll finish part one talking about the Security Operations Center, the SOC, but because email is the source of a lot of mischief, you will want to be aware of SPF and DKIM which are associated with email defense. So we've inserted a reference slide on these topics. In large measure, cyber defenses are managed from the SOC. SOC personnel manage the security aspects of the appliances and software we have mentioned. The key SOC tool is the SIM, the Security Information and Event Management System. These powerful tools must track, correlate, analyze, and suggest actions on a large number of events, essentially in real time. Then over a long time period, SIMS must manage complex analytical tools used to uncover malware and the activities of advanced persistent threats deeply hidden in oceans of data. In security operations, virtually every action taken by users and systems is recorded in systems logs syslogs. So SOC tools include systems for log management, access, and, and review. Nearly all security equipment manufacturers support a de facto log and event, event information formatting standard called Common Event Format, CEF. It was developed by ArcSight. In many cases, all traffic is stored should it have to be examined for event response, forensics, and the like. Therefore, storage volumes can be enormous, and specialized indexing tools are used to rapidly retrieve data from such massive volumes. NetFlows are data collected about packets, essentially packet metadata. They are a subset of full packet capture, but are often separately captured and stored. To maintain security situa situational awareness, systems are continuously monitored which can include managing things like vulnerability, patches, and configurations. There are specialized tools to assist with these efforts, some of which perform automated scans for vulnerabilities and networks. To facilitate tools' interoperability, vendors are coalescing around a set of specifications called SCAP, the Security Content Automation Protocol. That concludes part one, in which we've covered the basics of cybersecurity attack and defense. Please visit the website for more in-depth treatment of this material. In parts two and three, we'll discuss cybersecurity and the U.S. government.